For the last couple of years, Christopher Nolan has been telling us that 70 millimeter IMAX is the absolute best way to see his new film, Oppenheimer. So that's exactly what I did. Last night, I finally got to see Oppenheimer in 70 millimeter IMAX. There's only two where I'm from and there's only six in Canada. So this was a big deal for me. I bought my tickets way ahead of time. I got the exact seats that I wanted. I was really damn excited. Fast forward a little bit and 40 minutes left in the movie to go. What happens? this um but we'll try to get it up and running in the next five minutes if not i'll just i'll update you guys as time goes on okay the movie just stopped out of nowhere. Now, there's different reports as to what exactly happened at my specific showing in Vaughan, Ontario, which is about 40 minutes north of Toronto. Some people are saying it was a power outage. That being said, I will say, even when the show began, for a good 20, 30 seconds, there was only audio and no picture, which was not ideal, to say the least. So I put this little clip up on Twitter that we had technical difficulties in our showing, and lo and behold, it seems like this is a very widespread issue with the 70 millimeter print of Oppenheimer, specifically the 70 millimeter IMAX print. And we're get into this video of what's going on and why so many people are having issues projecting this movie. Here's what's going on. If you stop shooting movies on film, well, the thing is people start forgetting how to distribute and project movies on film. I overheard staff talking at my show and they had to fly someone in from LA to run the projector for the next two weeks of this IMAX presentation. And not only that, it took them two days to build the print. We're talking about a 600 pound beast. This thing is 11 miles long. It is stretching the capabilities of these IMAX projectors to their peak. The thing we've done with the platter over the years, because when I started working with IMAX film, it was okay, two and a half hours, that's it. And then we got to Interstellar, which went up to 247. And uh, what they were able to do for me is engineer the platters a little bit wider so that it has an extra rim. And that got a little wider and a little wider over the years. And then on this, I went to them and said, okay, I've got a 180 page script. That's a three hour movie on the nose. Can it be done? They looked at it, they looked at the platters and they came to the conclusion that it could just be done. <laughs> so not only do you need a projectionist that knows what they're doing, they really got to know what they're doing because this is unprecedented. No IMAX projectionist has ever dealt with a print like this. This I think is finally the, the outer limit of running time for an IMAX film print. Okay. Um, but we'll try to get it up and running in the next five minutes. And there's only 30 of these projectors left in the world, six of which are in Canada, two of which are close to me. And IMAX has a headquartered office in Canada and it was invented here. And still we're having issues projecting this movie. One of my first jobs was actually as a projectionist and I used to work with film. I know I look pretty young, but we're talking early 2007, 2008. I was projecting 35 millimeter prints at a movie theater. And let me tell you, that was one of the most stressful jobs I have ever had. It is such an intricate and complicated process, especially for a teenager to figure out. You need seasoned veterans that know what they're doing to run film these days. And it's a dying breed. This is a dying format. And what's really disconcerting to me is that this was supposed to be the movie that sort of saves IMAX or at least brings back the idea of 70 millimeter film print IMAX, the pinnacle of what we can do with projection of movies. And having a somewhat sloppy rollout does not bode well for the future of this format. But having exhibitions stop midway and have to switch over to digital or audio being out of sync, even in my screen, the stuff that did work wasn't the best. We had really bad gate weave where everything was shaking. There was dust all over the damn print. And these are things that I like. I think it's the character of film and it's why you want to see a movie on film. You like all the grittiness and the rawness of it. That's part of the experience. But I would say that 95, if not 99% of moviegoers are going there because they know what they can see at home on their big screen TVs and they know they can get HDR out of their iPhones. They're looking for a pristine, perfect experience. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like these early showings of Oppenheimer and IMAX on film are leaving a positive impression on audiences. So who's to blame here? Look, I'm not gonna point fingers at anybody. I don't think this is the studio's problem. I don't think this is even Christopher Nolan's problem. I think you could follow the food chain down to the actual theaters. Like it's on them to make sure that that their projections run properly. When we used to run 35 millimeter prints, we would do test screenings the night before, days before, to make sure that these things ran well. So the fact that we're having these technical issues, look, it could just be that this print is too complicated and they kind of bit off more than they could chew with it. And perhaps we just won't see a movie stretch this format as far as Christopher Nolan did. But isn't that also kind of amazing that a movie exists right now that we can barely even project? Don't you want to be part of that history? So even if you go to a screening this weekend and it doesn't work and it breaks down or the sound is out of sync or it's out of focus, all these little things that can go wrong with a real film projection. I think that's kind of amazing, and I think that's part of the magic of going to the movies. How about because this is the most important thing to ever happen in the history of the world? Okay. Um, but we'll
we'll try to get it up and running in the next five minutes. So my recommendation is try and see it on film. You can still see 70 millimeter film. It's not IMAX. It's just an experience that you have to have. This is a piece of cinematic history. I'm not going to get into the film itself. I will just say that it is spectacular. I need a couple more viewings to fully digest my opinion on it. In fact, right after this video, I'm going to see a digital laser IMAX screening. But look, this is going to be a rocky first weekend. Maybe next week they'll start to iron out all the kinks of this projection. But right now, be warned. You might have some issues with your screening when you go to see the 70 mil IMAX Oppenheimer. But like I said, I think that's part of this whole experience. I think it's fascinating and interesting. It just feels so old school. It feels like the old days of cinema and we didn't really know what we were doing. Everything is so digital and clean and clinical. I did a whole video on why I love the Batman for this reason, the dirtiness of it. And it doesn't get much dirtier than little dust on a print and the thing breaking down and not being able to be played in it, overheating and burning up, all these crazy things that can possibly happen with real, tangible, physical media. So let me know in the comments if you had any issues with your screening of the 70 millimeter IMAX Oppenheimer. Let me know what you thought of the film so far. This is truly one of the greatest cinematic experiences I have ever had, and I'm very excited to see it a few more times. But I think that's it for me. My name is Patrick, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making the video. Cheers.